Hi everybody, Jo here again. Thanks for joining me today. It's always lovely to have your company. So pluck up your cushions and make yourself comfy on your chair. Today, I thought we'd put a design in our calendar. So I hope you don't mind me continuing with my calendar, but I'm really enjoying this. And today we're going to put a design on August. But remember, these designs, don't pigeonhole yourself with thinking it has to be a calendar. They will look fabulous on cards, in your journals. At the end of the day, it's just a design. You know, you might want to use different stamps to me, different stencils, but as long as it inspires you to get crafting, or even if we just have some lovely time together, that's the most important thing today. So what I'm thinking is we're going to do some double stenciling. Recently I've had great fun with, and there's a video, if you look back you'll see from a couple of weeks ago where we used a couple of stencils. So I'm going to use these two today and as always I've had a bit of a play on a spare piece of card. And the two stencils I'm going to use, this one, Ornate, is becoming such a favourite. And I know we shouldn't have favourites, but I do. And the white orbs. And the reason I'm doing this is the stamp I want to use, which I'll introduce to you first, is called Gazelle. And it's this one, she says, and you probably can't see. Here we go. And this is because recently at one of my workshops at Lavinia HQ, one of our lovely friends asked if um and it was jill and she'd got this stamp and she said i haven't used it so i promised i would use it in one of my projects so that's the aim and that's why we're going for the white orbs because obviously i'm thinking with the bubbles here so that that's the theory behind it all so shall we see how we get on in practice and what i want to do is introduce my background first with my stenciling or shall I do my stamping first? Do you know what I'm going to do? What I always do and do my stamping first. And I'm going to look at Gazelle and have a look again. Use the acetate and just think where would I like her? I think I like her a bit more over this side. Yeah. So I'm just going to turn this round. And as always, I'm just going to put a little bit of copy of paper underneath. Two things... This helps if any ink goes over the side, but also for me, it just helps me. It's just my little comfort blanket. So I'm going to use my black, my Nocturne, my Versafine Claire ink, and ink up my stamp. Now this is probably off camera, but I don't want to stand it on top of my work here. In fact, what I will do, if I get a piece of kitchen towel, then I can. Again, I just want to minimise the chance of getting any bogus ink on my work. And that's the thing when you're working directly in your journal or directly on your calendar, try and keep it almost as clean as you can. And I know that's not easy for some of us. And again, I've just caught, so off camera, with my Inky Binky, which again is just a cloth. I'm just cleaning the edge of my stamp there. So I'm thinking a bit over this side. There, we'll pop her there. And it's lovely quality card in the calendars. But as always, you want to make sure, for me, I want the ink to soak into this card. So don't lift your acrylic block up too quickly. And remember, these are slightly flexible. So we do get that little bit of a, a flex. I think that's how I'm becoming as I get older. I've gone from flexible to being slightly flexible. <laughs> right, so we'll lift her up. And if you look, she is so beautiful. I'll turn around so you can see. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to blot that. Because I'm going to do my stencil work now. And I've used a versifying clay, so it's a slower drying ink. So I just want to blot that. So I hope you're all keeping well. And thank you for taking the time to leave comments. It is lovely when you do leave a comment, so thank you. So what we'll do now is we'll come in 
with the lovely ornate and we'll add some stenciling and I'm going to add two areas of stenciling as you know I like to do sort of across my work and I'm going to use confetti for this and I've got a lovely stencil brush here and this is the larger of the three and as always I'm just going to dab off in my lid and I want this to be quite light so again, nice light touch. I just want to see, if I look, I can just see here and I can almost come over where the beginning of the, the calendar and I can see where my stamping is locked so I can go round. And I just want to add a nice little bit of stenciling and I can lift up, look, oh that's pretty. Actually, I don't think I'll add any more. I like that there. I will bring it a bit close to you and I'm thinking if I just put this here, start over here, I'm not going to add any more ink on my stencil brush. If it's one of the things I've learnt is that gently, gently tickle with your stencil but also we don't need that much ink. There's ink on my stencil look which I can reuse. There's no point wasting ink. Right, let's have a look at this. Oh yes, that's pretty. So, if I pop the lid on my ink and lift this up to show you, can you see? And I think that's just the right amount there. I think that's really pretty. And again, this I'm not going to waste. I shall spritz that and pop it on a piece of card and we'll get a lovely background from that. So in with the white orbs now and I want to contrast in colour so I'm going to use the blue at all. I've been using this so much recently considering I'm not a blue girl. It is funny how much I've been using it. Now I want a larger circle. As you can see on the white orbs we have got some larger circles here but I want an even larger one than that. So I'm actually going to come in with my circle masks and to start off with I'm just going to turn my work I want a larger one in this corner again in the lid and I'm going to put the stenciling on top and just have these lovely two colours together so let me see oh yeah I'm happy with that and then I want another one down here. And I think just there, look. So see if I've got enough ink. I may just need to pick a little more up. Just want it a bit deeper at the bottom. And again, you can judge. You get to know how much ink is on your brush. Yeah. So I'm just going to give that a wipe. It's really important. Wipe things before you put them away. Even if you're in a rush, because do you know what? Next time you pick it up, if it ruins your work, you'd really wish that you had cleaned it. So we want some of these lovely orbs. And again, we can see through look. So I'm thinking in this sort of direction. Ink on the lid. And again, I'm just gently, gently want to catch some of these beautiful floating Now let me have a look at that. Oh, that's nice. And I want some almost to be heavier than others. I'm not re-inking and it is very much a tickle. And the reason I say tickle is when you're stenciling, it can be so easy to be heavy handed. So for me, the word tickle makes me use light tickling motions. Oh, I like that. Just a little bit more on this one here. But I like those, but not too heavy. So if I can bring that up to show you, because it's not easy. I know it doesn't show up that well. But you see how this is nice and light here. And we can still see the stenciling through. I love this one here. So I'm just going to turn my work round again. I do apologise. So if it just makes you a bit dizzy, as I say, I do apologise. It's just easier for me to work this way. 
and again I want to choose which I want some larger ones but then smaller ones so spend a bit of time getting your stencil right again there's no rush and again I just want to tickle a few of them here but I don't want to overdo it I can have a couple up here again lift and have a look just there I think I need again just there we need a little yeah I like that so again I'm going to put my stencil over there and I'll activate that with water make myself a spare background later but just so I can show you that's the design and I love that I think that's perfect what I might do is just add at the base here a couple more just for that continuity across the bottom let's add just a couple and again I'm not inking up again just that mere suggestion of some bubbles down here yeah as you know I like to add something at the base so what I have got as well is there's a lovely little stamp called Sea Bubbles and it's a it's a long stamp look <clears throat> sorry excuse me and I'm afraid don't tell Tracy but I cut mine up <clears throat> because although it's a lovely long stamp I like this little array of bubbles here and there are times when I just need a few little bubbles and I think this is one of them times or those times sorry my English is appalling so I get so carried away with crafting so I'm thinking we could add just a few up here look yeah do you like that and maybe just a couple there that way oh I've over inked look well we can we'll have to get rid of that somehow that'll teach me Obviously, I need to trim that a bit. But don't worry, we'll get rid of that. These things happen. Not the end of the world. I'm certainly not going to start again. Right. I could always pretend I've done it on purpose to show you how I'd get round it. She says, quickly thinking how she will get round it. Right, let's give that a bit of a blot. And we'll just ground our lovely fairy. I know she's probably very clever and can fly. But for me, I just want to add a bit of grounding to her. And I think I'll use the blue again. Just to keep it simple, colour on colour. And we'll just add some here, look. Just that mere suggestion of that blue colour. turn around yep and again we'll give that a wipe and her foot because she's just lifting that foot up we'll just give it a bit of a because she's lifting that one up look so that she can blow these bubbles right let's just see here we can just make this just want to add a few little dots just to give our bubbles a bit more depth and then we need to add some colour to her so I'm going to use my lovely watercolour pencils and I'm using this set I'm trying to remember I've had a couple of comments recently I don't show you what I use so I do apologise I'm usually that busy wanting to actually get on crafting so I want to add a little bit of skin tone to her so I'm just going to and again I just need to be mindful now what I have done, I have stamped her on a piece of card 
and then I've done some colouring and I've cut it out which I didn't think you'd want to see but I will just show you how I've done the colouring so here she is stamped on a piece of card and as you know I have a bit of a bit of a cheat way of colouring so what I tend to do is I want to use blues and purples so I will choose a light and a dark blue a light and a dark purple so for example on her large dress the area here I would just use my dark blue and where I've got shade, look, I'll decide the shade at the back, shade at the base here. And that's where I'll put my dark blue. Now, like I've said before, I have no training in colouring. I've not done any watercolour courses, anything like that. So there are probably rules you have to follow, but I just do my own little cheats way of colouring. So with my purple, I'm going to have, there'll be a bit of shade under here. And then if I turn it round, I want it darker up. We'll have some dark at the base here. And then up, we've got these lovely folds in this lovely, almost like a puffball dress. And again at the base. And these are my watercolour pencils. Then I'm going to take my lighter purple, go over the darker purple and into the other area. And I just find it blends those two together. And I'm almost leaving an area in the middle that's white. And that almost starts my highlighting. So if I show you that, it's almost a very simplistic way. But when I add the water, and again, I've got my watercolour brush number one. If I go into the light area first look, and then into the darker area, it will just blend. And hopefully it will just start. So I'm going in the lighter area around here. And then I'm going to bring in that darker area look. And the reason I just clean my brush in between is again so I can start on that lighter area and then go into the darker purple. And that's just how I do a very, for me it's a very simple way of watercolouring. And that's just using the light and the dark colours look. And it lift that up. Can you see? So it's given me a guide and obviously you will take longer. So what I have done is I've already cut these areas out and in my little tin I've got the pieces look that I've cut out because you didn't want to see me cutting them out and I'm thinking we're going to decoupage them on a now we've got some lovely new sticks to glue at Lavinia and this is our silicone adhesive and I just want to try this and see how it works. Now when your tube comes look, this is a dimensional glue and it dries clear, there will be a little um, seal over the top and you need to turn the lid round look and there's a little like a pokey tool there. Now best not to do it over your work she says just in case and all you're going to do is poke that there and it will break the seal look and once that seal's broken then we have a little applicator and we can pop the applicator on but I must be honest I have my little tool that I like to use but it was just to show you that bit so what we'll do We've got her gorgeous dress here and I'm just going to shape it a little bit in the wings and then I'm going to squeeze some glue out and I just pop mine on like this. But again, I'm well aware we all have different ways of working. So however, if you want to use a little nozzle, use the little nozzle. I think that's the beauty of crafting. I always think it's like baking. We all have different ways when we're cooking, don't we? little hints and tips and recipes and and for me crafting a lot of it is like a recipe and it's just about sometimes following that recipe and this is just a pokey tool that I've had for years but for me I find it the best way to actually put my glue on 
So we'll now just slide this into place. And again, you've got wiggle time. Now you could add colour underneath if you wanted. I could also add more of the glue to decoupage the area more. But I don't want to over decoupage it because obviously this is in my calendar. If this was on a card, I really could add more depth with my glue and have a, a larger area decoupaged. So I'm just going to pop her hat on. We've got her wings there. And I've got this tiny bit of her dress here. So, and this really is a tiny bit. So I might be a bit fiddly, might be fingers and thumbs here. So I need a tiny bit of glue on here. And let's just see. So I could do with you just holding your breath, if you will, because I think that would really help me. I'm just going to use my scissors to actually... There we go. So that's on there, that's there. Just lovely. Right, I'm happy with that. So again, just wiping my hands and then with all 3D glues, just make sure that your glue is up and has a nice little ball before you put the lid on. Now I just want to add some little white highlights. So this is where we come in with the Van Gogh pencils and this is your, your pastel pencils and we'll just come in with a little bit of, of shade, just a little bit of shade just under her feet. Just to, to ground her a little and we're not putting a, a light source in so we'll just add a little bit just to go over the August there. I just think that finishes it off. And then we'll come in with the white and we'll just add a little bit. Just because we can. Now we need something on there, don't we? Although I quite like it white. What do you think? Now, the bubbles, as I say, I want to add something to those. And what I'm thinking of is adding, where have I put it? Do you do this? Put things down. I want to add some liquid pearls. So I think I'll add my sentiment first. And I've got my sentiment stickers here. Now... I was going to put a sentiment off my journaling stickers, but because we've got a blue colour and these have got a green background, I'm thinking there's a couple on my steampunk ones. And actually, time for a brew is in blue. And oh, August is definitely going to be time for a brew, isn't it? So let's find my scissors. Now, what I'm wondering is where I've got that. I think I may just... Yeah, that's going over there. Because I'm not happy with that. But that's what happens when we're crafting, isn't it? So obviously, I'm not keen on that. So let's just distract and just, oh look, we could put that there. That did exactly what I didn't want and it stuck. You know when I was saying about highlight it? Just hold it where you want and then stick it down. So we're going to pop it there. There we go. And just because I've got the, the black ink, I'm just going to frame it. Now, again, just a loose line. And I think that will just... And it's up to you if you want to add any little squiggles. If there's odd bits on your work you don't like, putting a sentiment over the top of it can really work. 
and then I'm thinking some liquid pearls and I don't want to add a lot else to that I think that's pretty in itself and I don't want to overdo it I love the movement down here I could add something here but again I think it would just overdo it so I'm thinking come in with my liquid pearls now a little tip about liquid pearls it's a bit rude and it can have wind so I would always recommend just squeezing some out on your mat to start off with now I'm thinking where we've got our bubbles look and it's just lift it up we could put and hardly touch the page but lift it straight up and you sort of hold your breath while you're doing it but I think that is so pretty and just for down here let's add a couple almost to bring the design and then in the corner here, I'm just going to add a couple down here, just almost for continuity of design. And I am just going to wipe this up, otherwise I can see what's going to happen, can you? I'm going to turn this round and it will move in there. And I just want a couple over here. Just a, a group, a nice group of a few. Don't want to overdo it, don't want to overcook it. But I think it's nice just to have an over here near the August. Let's just have, there we go. Right, one more and then, right, walk away, Mrs. Rice, stop. Definitely stop. So that one was the white opal in the liquid pearls and they will dry hard. Obviously you can use glossy accents as well. That's something else you can use. So if I bring that closer and nobody will ever know what happened under there. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. So you won't tell them and I won't tell them. And then at the base, look, we've just got that little bit down here. Just that little something and that will be August. And I just think that is so pretty. And I think there are so many different stencils that you could use. But as I said before, look at the way, the circles. Have a go, different combinations, different colours, different stencils together and see what you come up with. I can't wait to see what you come up with. But for you, Jill, there's Gazelle. And I do think she looks lovely there. In fact, I've probably only used her a couple of times. Isn't it funny? Look at, look at your stamp. See if, like me, I bet you've got ones that you haven't used very often. Maybe you could challenge you and a friend. Just a different stamp and say, let's use it this week. Let's see how we use it. Anyway, I'd better go. Eric needs a walk. You take care, everybody. Pop back tomorrow. Love and hugs from me. Bye for now.